Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw. I'm here with a familiar face, uh, Jack Anderson, who is the president of Crystal Cruises. He was the president of Crystal Cruises. And of course, we know what's recently happened to the, the brand. And now he's back as president of the reborn Crystal Cruises. And we're going to get into that and how that all came about on Insider Travel Report. Now, Jack, first of all, congratulations. Uh, uh, we've talked over the years, and you were, an inter you were an interim president, then you were a full president. Then, of course, we had the challenges that you faced over the last year with the demise of Genting Hong Kong and then everything else that happened. Then, uh, as just to bring people up to speed, uh, the, the brand and two ships were bought uh, by uh, Manfredi Lefebvre and Abercrombie and & Kent. Uh, and now he is just in recent weeks named you president again. How did how did this all come back uh, come about? Your return as president of Crystal. Well, uh, I, I have to say that uh, Mr. Lefebvre's path and mine have crossed quite a few times over the years, and I would like to think with. Uh, uh, an affinity and, and mutual respect. So we've known each other for quite a while, professionally. In late 2021, the former owners of Crystal Cruises initiated a company sale. Right. And the Heritage Group and, and Manfredi were part of that process. I was specifically assigned uh, by the owners uh, to cooperate in any way possible with the potential buyers. Okay. And therefore worked quite closely with Manfredi and Christina Levis uh, as they were going through their due diligence and formulating plans to purchase the company. Okay. Unfortunately, in January of 22, Crystal employees and crew and myself learned of the owner's filing for liquidation. Right. Via a press release. Not the way you not the way you want to get that, right? <laughs> <laughs> the result was the, the liquidators and banks were selling off the ships and other assets, including the, the brand name. Um, Manfredi's tenacity, perseverance, and vision for Crystal was undeterred even after the uh, liquidation filing. Okay. Ultimately, after I believe almost six months, uh, he was able to accomplish the asset purchase of Symphony and Serenity. Right. The brand name Crystal Cruises, some inventory, and the past guest database. Okay. Uh, at that time, Manfredi asked me to help create the new Crystal. And it was a pretty easy decision. Yeah, well, I guess I, I guess you know. Obviously, I remember talking with you. That was a a sad day when you had to get out and and shut down. I know that was not something that you wanted. But what what was it made you want to return to lead Crystal? And, and I mean, and what kind of commitment have you made to Manfredi to stay? Sure, the uh, the opportunity to work with Manfredi and Jeffrey Kent to restore the Crystal brand to its penultimate place as the best of the luxury cruise lines is certainly part of my motivation um, to bring back the best officers and crew in the cruise industry. Um, I will stay as long as uh, I add value to this mm -hmm. company and my, my commitment to both Manfredi and Jeffrey and Christina Levis is I will give my all to this new company, our employees, our crew, our guests, 
and our tribal partners. Hopefully, and, and I, I, I believe better than it ever was. Well, that's it. And I know you felt very badly about what had happened in terms of many of the the refunds and commissions and things going on. Uh, Do do you have any idea the amount of refunds and unpaid commissions that were still outstanding from the old crystal? And and does the new crystal have any obligation to compensate those guests or travel advisors? Yeah. Um, Subsequent to parent companies filing for liquidation, the Crystal Cruises entity filed in the state of Florida what's called an ABC, Assignment for Benefit of Creditors filing. In that process, the court appoints a, a, an assignee. Uh, in this case, it's Michael Moker and Associates. And essentially, we sign over all assets and all liabilities and the assignee resume, assumes responsibility for maximizing the liquidation of assets, collecting claims, and then making settlement of those claims. We do not have those records, mm-hmm. and we do not have any visibility to the amounts owed nor the progress, although I hope and expect that there has been progress. Um, it would not be possible. Uh, for us to interfere with the court legal assignment for this effort. And although we share that a significant contribution was made uh, by the Heritage Group to Mokers in in the process of acquiring acquiring inventory and the past guest database. That was part of the liquidation that generates cash for the claim settlement. Let me tell you, it was a very significant amount of money. Um, There are many other assets that were liquidated. And of course, a great deal of money was being held by credit card companies. But uh, we have neither visibility or, or capability or responsibility that has now been assigned by the court. So those, so, so as customers and travel advisors, they're still going to have to go through the court to get whatever they're due at this point. Well, uh, Mokers and Associates has sent notification to customers, travel agents, and vendors of the process to submit claims. And on what was Crystal Cruise's website for a very significant amount of time, if you went there, uh, you were introduced to Mokers and the process of how to file a claim. Got it. Uh, we have now recovered the website and we'll be building the new Crystal Cruises website. Um, but that's the process. And uh, the, they're very knowledgeable, competent people that are going through that diligently. No, absolutely. Now, how, how do you build after, obviously, you, you had an incredible brand and you you did for so long until COVID hit. And then we had a lot of challenges then. And and obviously what happened with the liquidation, uh, how do you uh, build back trust with both your customers, your obviously you have your past customers and with travel advisors? And how much do you think the Crystal brand has been tarnished in the last two years? We do plan to make very significant incentives for Crystal past guests and uh, incentives for travel agents to book the new Crystal Cruise Lines when the the new itineraries are launched. Right. I expect we'll have to win them back one at a time. Uh, I, I, I can tell you that it's overwhelming the amount of uh, positive messages that I've received and, and we see in social media from guests and travel agents alike and former employees that are hoping for the best and looking forward to Crystal's uh, recreation. 
No, it is true. I mean, Crystal had a beloved brand and, and it, it sort of went south very quickly, not not through anything that the folks at Crystal did, but uh, because of your parent company in large extent, and obviously because of COVID and other things that were going on at the time. Now, uh, I, you've then, so you've got the two ocean going ships, you've got uh, uh, Crystal Symphony and Crystal Serenity. Uh, and I understand that they're both going into, uh, going to be renovated. Uh, what's the process now and how long will that take? Uh, we're working with the uh, Fink and Cherry Shipyard and ship designers in uh, a, a definition process of what work will be done. Right. I can tell you it will be extensive. It will include uh, a significant amount of staterooms where there are currently two staterooms or three staterooms they'll be converted into two. Okay. And they'll be 50% larger. Uh, larger staterooms with butlers, a lower guest capacity. Right. Are just some of the objectives in the, the dry dock and refurbishment. Both ships will have a, a extensive uh, dried up work to bring them up and uh, freshening of all the public areas and staterooms as well, just to make them look as pristine and new as possible. Uh, one of the benefits that will fall out of the uh, reconfiguration of staterooms, less staterooms, larger staterooms. Right. And the reduction of guest capacity is, it's important to remember, these two ships were some of the most spacious uh, at sea in terms of guest public space ratios. Right. But we reduce the capacity, they're going to be much more, even more luxurious and spacious. Uh, and, and we're going through room by room, looking for opportunities not only to just make it look, make sure everything looks perfect, but to innovate, introduce new things, mm -hmm. um, and dazzle both our, our travel partners and guests when they return. No, and absolutely, and I and, and I, I, I they were always spacious, and as you said, they'll be even more spacious. But but how long is the shelf life for both of these ships? They both date from, I believe, the 1990s, early 2000s. Uh, uh, how how long can you keep doing this? You the, the ships were always incredibly well maintained. Uh, that that always hap was always the case. Whenever I got on, I was amazed that you know this did not look like a ship that dated from the nineties. Let's say, uh, but but what? How long? You know the the bones of the ship, uh, or can you just keep on doing this for a while? The life of a cruise ship depends a lot on your investment in. Mm -hmm continual maintenance and refurbishment, which was done up until COVID. Right. And now it will be restored over the extended dry dock and refurbishment period. The ships have a warm, classic lines and appeal. They're going to have spacious staterooms, spacious public areas, resulting from the lower guest counts. I do not believe either ship has an expiration date. Okay, that that's fair enough. Now, now you you mentioned, and how long will the process take to get these ships out? Uh, when do you expect to see them back in the water? Uh, still tentative, but uh, at this point, we have, we're not more specific than next summer. Okay, and then also, uh, uh, you you know, there's next so next summer. Uh, you're, you're planning. And what about itineraries? Uh, when are you going to start releasing those and figuring out where you're going to go? Yeah, four, fourth quarter of this year. Oh, okay. So early. So you will get, and they'll be bookable at that point, probably? Uh, in, in approximately the, that same time frame. That's our Fantastic. goal. No. Now, now, let's talk about some of the other assets that were part of Crystal, when you were overseeing it, uh, wh what's happened with the four river cruise vessels? Well, actually five, if you count the Mozart, but uh, the newer ones, uh, to my knowledge, I haven't heard anything about them being sold by the court. Uh, and and would would Manfredi and his team, I know at one point, wanted, I thought we we're going to think about buying the whole thing. 
Uh, are they still interested in buying those river cruise uh, festivals, Manfredi and uh, Heritage? Uh, I haven't seen any indication. That, that's a question that would be better directed to Manfredi, but at this time they seem to be uh, entirely focused on creating these ocean ships right. to return in an ultra luxury category. Um, I do not know the status of the river ships. It kind of went dark. Yeah. The only people that would really have knowledge are Alvarez and Marcel, the, uh, the Genting Hong Kong assigned liquidators and the lending banks themselves. But I have no knowledge of what's happened to what were extraordinarily beautiful river ships. They were. They were some of them, again, the most some of the most spacious and um, you know, basically the lowest passenger count and things like that. And uh, I thought always thought, you know, given what Abercrombie and Kent does, and uh it would have been a good fit. But for now, I guess you're gonna have to to digest the two ships that you have and and get those going and we'll see what happens with those river ships of course as we know uh the expedition ship which a lot of people wanted uh was eventually bought uh, by royal caribbean and put into the silver sea fleet uh that that would have been a nice addition i think to uh expedition but right now that's that's gone to silver sea right yeah i, I i'll just say we're very disappointed not to be able to acquire the endeavor right is an ex an exceptional expedition ship, and uh, hopefully, uh, expedition will be in Crystal Cruises' future. Now, uh, did when you talked with Manfredi and signed on, did he make any commitment about whether uh, beyond the two existing ocean-going ships, uh, he was interested in possibly building more ships, uh, either ocean-going or perhaps expedition? Uh, in any discussion of new builds or acquisitions, I would not want to get in front of Manfredi's okay. announcement. So uh, I, I, I leave you to feel free to ask him that question. I, I hope to soon. I'll probably see him. We're not preempting on that. <laughs> and, and then I'll tell you, and then you'll know what you have to deal with, right? <laughs> there you go. You could send out a press release. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, well, then Freddie's known to build a few ships in his time, so we'll see what happens uh, as we go down. Man, Freddie's iconic stature as the founder of Silver Sea and Jeffrey Kent forever, Conrad and Kent, uh, create a very exciting stability, vision, uh, and future for for these sister companies. So yeah, it's very exciting. No, I'm, I'm I know Man Freddie well, and I know uh, Jeff as well. Uh, great, 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 iconic figures in the business. And I'm sure their backing and their their interest in this project is going to serve you well and and allow you to to make the crystal that you want now that uh, that you're you're back back in the fold. Now, uh, one of the things I guess is staffing up, and uh, you had such a great team, and a lot of them have found some very good jobs in other other companies, but there's still a few out there. But what, what's your vision for getting that team back together? Uh, we are in the process of defining the organization and acquiring the best talent we can to support all of the functions from sales and marketing and public relations and uh, reservations and hotel management. Uh, there, there will be, I think, over the weeks and months to come, more announcements regarding the uh, key employees, and we are certainly also making invitation and outreach to the past crew and officers. Right. Uh, they, they were, they are, and they will be the heartbeat uh, for Crystal. They, it, they're so loved by, by guests and agents. They're, they're amazing. So, we are focusing on on getting uh, employees back and the crew back, and I expect 
as we make these announcement, people will be comfortable and impressed with the quality of the team on and off the ships. Yeah, well, Crystal, as you mentioned, is really well known for its crew, its staff. Uh, and I do know some staffers who are uh, some crew who are eager to get back on board as soon as they can, uh, even though they may have gone to other uh, companies uh, at this point. But they they might they might be open to an offer. We'll That's see what possible. happens. Yeah. Now, uh, when you what what when you first became president and when you are pre your president now, what, what has been your first action? What are you focusing on initially? Oh, there, <laughs> this is Everything. a this is a new startup company. Uh, right. And, and as you said, because the assets were all uh, blown asunder and, and employees necessarily, and, and in many cases with my help, have moved on to other companies and positions. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking for a new office. We're hiring employees. We're, we're setting up policies and procedures. We're developing the, the marketing positioning um this week and next I'll be working on itineraries mm -hmm. uh, as a primary focus. But with all of that said, everything is focused on excellence of people, product, service, and everything that we can do to earn the trust of our past guests and our travel partners. And as in that vein, is there anything else you want to say? We go out to about 105,000 travel advisors now. Uh, what do you want to say to them uh, as this uh, rebirth of Crystal and you're back in charge? I have so many friends in the travel advisor side of the business um, that have reached out with phone calls and emails and text messages of hope and support and more of our past guests than I can count going, tell me when, tell me where. I want to book the first cruise. I hope you'll be there. And I look forward to seeing you again. So to all of our travel partners and guests, I, I, I humbly say thank you. And we're going to do everything we can to make it amazing. And I think you will. And I got to tell you, when I spoke with you that last week, it was not a fun time for you. It was not. It was very sad. I know you were upset and it, it was not something you wanted to see. But it sounds like you're having fun now. Uh, we're, we're creating a new company and it, it, it's it's going to be amazing. And well, we have great support and working with Abercrombie and Kent. Uh, it, it just provides for a great team, great synergy opportunities, uh, excellent leadership and vision. Yeah, it's a bit more fun than maybe when we talked in January. <laughs> I would hope so. I would hope so. Now, you mentioned that you got the website back, uh, and I assume you're starting to put up stuff there. What, what's the URL now for the, the Reborn Crystal? Is it crystalcruises.com? Sure is. All right. So uh, w You're not going to find a lot there yet. Uh, okay. But, but it says, you know, we're back. Right. Uh, there's going to be a, a section for career opportunities. Mm -hmm. And then as we finalize itineraries, you know, we'll start populating itineraries as we finalize the plans for the ship and have uh, drawings and more details about the enhancements on board the ships. All of that will start filling in on the website. We'll be providing regular updates to uh, media and issuing press releases, emails to our past guests and travel partners. And as you said, crystalcruises.com. All will have more and more information as we progress. Well, Jack, first of all, congratulations on your back. As I said, you're, you're, it, I'm happy to see this. It was, it was, it was really the beginning of the year. It was not a pleasant time for all of us who loved Crystal, and we're sad to see it go. For for you, I know you felt so strongly about it. You've been working with this company off and on, and and as a consultant, as back into president, interim president. I still remember saying, "Why don't you just take the full presidency?" And you did, uh, and then you had to deal with all the Your idea. 
<laughs> you had all the fallout after that, which who knew we were at that point, we were, we were going to be in COVID. But again, congratulations. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in person soon. And uh, good luck with all the things you have to do. But it sounds like you're going to have a fun time doing it because you can now bring it back the way you want to. Thank you, James. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.